Hey everybody, in today's video I am going to show you where to get one of these sexy and useful locks, uh, clay capes. These will keep you cold, uh, warm rather, in the cold. Uh, they're, they're just fantastic. They look good, they work great, um, they'll protect you from the high altitude cold mountains, and they will also even uh, protect you from uh, getting cold in the night. Alright, so we are going to need some ingredients to start, and what we are going to need uh, include da, 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 da. it includes a few things from from maybe this other crafting bench. All right, let's try that one more time. So what we need are basically just a couple of things: two silver and uh, some locks pelts. So let's start out by heading to the plains. Uh, this is where you can find some locks. And I'm going to show you how to take down locks, even if you're not very high level. There is a strategy to it. Uh, if you have a bow and arrow, you'll probably will need quite a few arrows. But what you're going to be looking for is the plains biome. If you haven't found that yet in your game, uh, it looks um, well. It looks like uh, like the desert. <laughs> you just basically have to run around until you find a plains biome. So I've got a plains biome right over here. So we're just going to run around the corner. It uh, would have been a good idea for me to rest a little bit before uh, I attempted this because stamina is pretty helpful when you, you know when you get into some combat, but that's okay. Um, so I've got one locks right over there. Uh, you will probably want a hundred arrows, maybe maybe more. Um, but the important thing is to also feed yourself pretty well so you have good high stamina <clears throat> because we are going to need to do quite a bit of running and a little bit of evading. I'm assuming that you're not super high level at this point and so um, yeah just trying to give you some tips that will help you to survive but the main thing is the strategy. So number one don't spend too much time aiming your bow your stamina goes down as you do and we need to keep our stamina up. Uh, it's great to get that initial snipe shot I'll just go for that one because that will do quite a bit of extra damage as the lox runs close to you of course, you can just unload on him <clears throat> as much as you want. I'll assume you don't have a great bow at the moment, and I'll just show you the strategy for survival. The strategy for survival is to wait for him to attack and then take a little step back. Wait for him to attack, step back. If you try to run away the whole time, he's just going to constantly be chasing you, constantly uh, kind of be dogging you on, right? Um, well, this one's having some pathfinding issues. <laughs> um, so the best thing to do is just to time his attacks. Wait for that pause, take a step back. Wait for that pause, take a step back. And I'm, I'm actually sprinting when I do this. So basically doing this, you can keep your stamina up. You can pick away at him with bow and arrow. Wait for him to pause, take a step back. Make sure you wait for him to start that attack before you take the step back. Otherwise, he'll stick to you. And you might mistime your hit. And he hits hard. He hits really, really hard. <laughs> You can definitely do this without taking any damage, so you don't need great armor or anything like that. You just need patience and timing. All right, so we, once we take our locks down, he will drop, I believe he will drop, I'm not sure how many pelts he will drop, two pelts. Okay, so we're gonna need to kill, uh, it looks like three, two to three locks. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and I'll catch up with you once that is done. As a side note, if you are not experienced in the plains, it can be a dangerous place if you don't know how to navigate it. <clears throat> Once you know how to navigate it, well, I'm just wearing some troll hide armor, and I can, you know, I can stay alive pretty easily. Um, it's great to take those deskitos down from a distance. Um, if you can't, if they can't see you, you can see them. <laughs> That's great. I've also got a video on how to kill a deskito if one does engage you, so you can watch that. Uh, and uh, learn a little bit how to survive. Uh, name of the game, have a, a, you know the best shield you can get to start. <clears throat> um, but basically, uh, that will help you to get the timing for how to take the Deskito down. Check out the other video for that. Uh, these little guys are okay to snipe at a distance. If you have a decent bow, you can take them down in a few hits. If you don't have a decent bow, it's a similar strategy to the locks, right? So we kind of wait for them to make their move. We get out of the way, we take a few shots, we wait for them to make their move, you know, we do a thing. So it's kind of a similar strategy, <clears throat> but in the plains, good rule of thumb, situational awareness, what's going on around you. Uh, those little guys can appear out of nowhere and they hit super duper hard. Uh, the Deskitos, the same story, appear out of nowhere, hit super duper hard. 
anyway, yeah, just a couple of planes survival tips. It's great if you can find some locks right at the edge of your planes biome. Um, but uh, generally speaking, don't be as scared of it. You know, uh, once you, I mean, you, you initially it's kind of tricky, but uh, everything has its patterns and its, and its systems. And once you kind of learn how everything interacts, you can kind of keep an eye out for stuff and you can avoid the pitfalls. So even without armor, you can definitely navigate the planes. Incidentally, if you haven't killed locks before, locks meat is absolutely fantastic. This is the stats, 70 health, 40 stamina, 2,000 duration, 3 hit points per tick. A nice way to cook things up is just to line up, uh, well, a whole lot of cooking sticks and put them all on top. <laughs> okay, so next up we are headed into the uh, snowy hills biome into the mountains biome. <laughs> In order to initially survive that, what you are going to need are some frost resistance potions. I don't think it matters if you have minor frost or, or um, uh, medium frost resistance. <clears throat> Actually, I'm not even sure if there's two types, but uh, here's what you need to create some frost resistance mead. Some honey, some thistles, some blood bags, some gray dwarf eyes. I'm sure you know where to get at least these things. These things can be found in the dark forest biome. You just pick them pick them as plants. Honey is, of course, coming from the beehives. Gray dwarf, dwarf eyes goes without saying. Blood bags <clears throat> come from eels. Eels? Yeah, eels. Leeches. No, they come from leeches in the swamp. They remind me of the shrieking eels from the Princess Bride. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's where you get all those things. You will also need... Uh, fermenter. Once your once your mead, your frost resistance mead is created, you need to pop it into the fermenter. Wait for quite a while, a couple days, I think it takes, um, of game you know game time, and then you will have your frost resistance mead. Now, once you have your fancy locks cloak, you won't need this frost resistance mead anymore. But until you have it, uh, this is this is the way to go. <clears throat> Alternatively, you can create a lot of campfires <laughs> and create like a like a, a relay of campfires. Uh, that will help you survive. I'll show you how to do both the things. In the meantime, I'll, I'll bring this frost resistance mead with me. Yeah, no, and I'll leave it behind. You, you understand the idea. We need the frost resistance mead. Um, but if you don't have it, I'll show you a way to also get around it. Now, let's find ourselves a snowy biome and head on over there. All right. All right. Let's assume uh, that you didn't uh, that you, you that you don't have any frost resistance potions yet, and you just want to skip that part for, for the moment. Uh oh, <laughs> it looks like I'm being hunted by wolves. Uh, okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> wow, these wolves—they're going to come and try to take out that locks. I wonder what would happen if I just stood <laughs> stood beside this locks. I bet you, I bet you, he would take out all of these. Uh, wow, that works. That's a way to do it. That's a, that's a great way to do it, Loxy boy. Good job. All right. So I'm going to run away from you. Wow, this guy's like my uh, my castle guardian here. <laughs> Not me, buddy. Turn around. Turn around. <laughs> deal with those wolves. Uh, all right, I'll deal with that one. I'll take this one. You take those three. Good job. Well done. Ooh. <laughs> nicely done. Nicely done. Uh, oops. All right. Just run around the corner. Around the corner. Which I'll probably just hide behind, hide on my uh, up and coming castle wall here. Got. I've literally got wolves at the gate. That's fine. That's fine because I have my <laughs> Star Wars Locks Defender. Uh, if you guys are, are not enjoying this uh, wolf <laughs> massacre, uh, you can just skip ahead a little bit in the video. Uh, wow, those are really effective walls. I don't know how they seem to be keeping him out, but, but they do. Well done. Good job, walls. Oh, man. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of repair here. Okay, Loxy Boy has done his job. No? The hunt is over. Almost over. Okay. Alright. Wow. Great job. Okay. Free wolf pelts for everybody. 
And this locks, I don't know, I think he's gonna have to die. Oh, he's killing my stuff. Stop killing my gate, buddy. Okay, all right. Small hiccup, small, small, uh, small set of issues there. Um, plenty of wolf pelts to go around. Um, so let me quickly reassemble my, reassemble my portal gate back to my main base. And that was, uh, there we go. All right, so uh, plenty, okay, <laughs> let's continue our journey now, undaunted, into the mountains. Um, and like I said, I was going to grab some wood, yes, and some rocks. So you're going to need quite a few wood, wood and rocks. Let's pretend you didn't have a cape. I'm going to tape my cape, tape my cape off right now, just to show you how this could be done if you want to bypass the whole uh, swamp portion of the game. If you, um, it, it is a good idea to do the swamp portion of the game because uh, it will be very helpful to have the wishbone in order to find the silver ore. Uh, but otherwise, you know, you can you can make yourself a relay, relay of campfires all along the way. Keep yourself warm. This is a, a little bit tr problematic when it comes to getting attacked and needing a bit of space to run away. Um, but it's it, just so you know, it can be done. That being said, I'm going to put my cloak back on. And uh, if you do, do have the wishbone, you will probably want to activate that. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to, going to be running around until we find uh, a silver ore vein. Uh, those are usually indicated by the, by the wishbone uh, signal indicator, I think. I think... Um, I don't know what I did here. I was digging a hole. Anyway, I will run around a little bit until I find... Uh, oh, and by the way, if you haven't been to the, uh, the snow biomes, it's a good place also to get obsidian. Really quick and easy. Pick up some obsidian. Um, in terms of enemies you will encounter, you will want a bow. That's probably your best way to go because you'll probably want to range the wolves and range the, uh, range the drakes. Uh, if you can catch them unaware, they're basically one-shot material. If they see you, they take a few additional shots, but they just have kind of a ranged attack weapon, so uh, it's not too hard to dodge. Um, yeah, that being said, I'm going to run around here until I find a silver uh, vein. And I'll be right back. All right. Okay, so I've kind of run all around this mountain, and I haven't gotten any pings on my on my wishbone. Uh, by the way, if you haven't got the Wishbone, it is obtained from defeating Bone Mass, the swamp boss. I do believe it's possible to find silver without it. You can occasionally see silver sticking out of the side of a mountain, but it is unlikely. It is much more difficult to find silver without a Wishbone. So, yeah, that's just a tip. But uh, I was going to say, um, not all forest, or, sorry, snow biomes necessarily have silver. Um, if you find that you're in a smaller snow biome, you might not necessarily find any silver there. So uh, what you'll probably want to do is look around for a larger snow biome area and head on over to that one, which is what I am going to do now. Okay, after long last, I have found a signal and what you'll notice is when you have your wishbone equipped and you're nearby a silver vein, you just kind of have to keep wandering around until you get to that strong pulse pattern. Which seems to be right around here for me. So you take out your pickaxe and you start digging. Okay, look at that. Here we go. Silver vein. So this is what you need. Let's get a, get, a, get ourselves a little bit of silver here. I don't know why it's saying too hard. <laughs> must be uh, must be glitching glitching on something because yeah, it's not too hard. 
Um, I was actually going, going to do a little experiment. I'm not sure if a bronze pickaxe can get silver. I think so. I'm pretty sure. No. You will actually need an iron pickaxe from the swamp. So basically silver is going to be un unobtainable. And I have to amend what I said previously in my video, but silver is going to be unobtainable um, until you until you have a silver uh, an iron pickaxe, which you get from the swamp. Of course, I have a video all about the swamp uh, coming up soon, so you'll need to check that out if you haven't watched it yet and you're not familiar with swamp uh, biome, the swamp biome rather. All right, so I'm going to mine some silver and bring it back to my home base, and I'll pick it up when we get back. Okay, the uh, charcoal goes in, the silver goes in, and of course you still can't teleport your materials even when they've been uh, smelted already, but you know you can set up your little, and this is kind of not a bad idea. If you're planning to mine quite a bit of silver, then you may just want to set up a sort of pop-up blacksmithery shop where you can craft your silver items from. Meanwhile, we've got one bit of silver. I just need one more and that will be a complete how to craft your locks, cape for warmth, for style, for comfort, everything a viking could possibly want in a cape. Um, yeah, this is my favorite cape. The wolf cape is also good. I'm going to make a video about how to make a wolf cape uh, as well. So if you haven't seen that video yet, take a look on my channel for that one. It's going to be a pretty similar process though. All right, there's my last bit of silver, second bit of silver, last one I need. Uh, oh, I, I, you know what I did? <laughs> I, put up a, I put up a cooking station. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, here we go. Chopping block down, repair station level two, a locks cape, six pelts, two silver, and boom! That's how you get your shiny locks cape. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials like this, so please subscribe, and I uh, hope to see you in the future. All right.